Hello and welcome to your um, next tutorial. And last tutorial we learned about the infinite amount of um, parameters and this we'll learn about the array. And I keep forgetting whether I went over the for loop. Let me just go over that again real fast. So first you have to make a variable declaration. Then you have to say, okay, keep doing something until that variable does, you know, you know, until this is false, this statement is false. And after that loop is done, what are you going to do with that variable x plus plus? And you can just do something system dot out dot print line x. You run it. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, not that hard. There's also another thing called the do or the for each loop. I don't really use that that much. You can do the same thing with the for loop. I like the for loop a little better anyways. Okay, so um we're going to go about an array. And what an array is, is it's like, um, it's a variable, but that variable can hold several pieces of data. So, um, we have our x variable, it's going to be an array. And an array, you have to have that before. So, we can have an x equals, and then when you make it equal something, it's going to have curly braces, and it's going to have the numbers that you want to do. Or let's do this a little bit more random. All right, pretty simple, right? So well, this is our multiple values of x. So let's just say system dot out dot print line x. Now you're going to notice that it doesn't give us an error, and I'm actually surprised why. Okay, it's going to give us the um, I don't even know what that is, just pretend you don't see it. What you're going to have to do is you're going to actually have to specify, okay, which one of these do I want to print? Let's say I just wanted to print the um, first one. Now, something interesting about Java or any computer programming language is this is going to be the zeroth place, this is going to be the second, and they're going to be the fifth. We might be thinking, okay, there's six numbers though. Zero counts as the first one. So you can always just do, let's say I wanted to get the second one. Just remember, do two minus one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do that, we're going to have a one in there. And then we're going to do this one. Second place, remember you put it back one, two minus one equals one. It's going to run, it's going to do the fifth place. It's going to say five. So we want you to do zero. This is kind of a confusing concept at first. Just ignore it, you know, zero, one. Remember that this is always zero, and er basically it's gonna be the length minus one. And there's a whole computer theory as to why that is. Just ignore it. Um, let me think. So you have your array, and you can have arrays of several types. You can have a Boolean and B, right? And let's say you wanted to do um, equals uh, true, true, false, false, um, false, whatever, true. Now let's say, okay, I don't really care about all this. I just want to know how big the array is. Luckily, we have a method called array.length. And all that is is you could do int x equals b dot length and it's not a per, it's not a method so you don't have those it's just a regular command for some reason and then you can do system dot out dot print line x and then you run it and then you see five okay little contradictory i thought you said that this is five uh, zero yes but at the same time it counts how many actual places of R. And there's one, two, three, four, five. You only do that zero rule when you say you want you to do O, um, you know, B, and then fetch the value of the array. So this will return um, that one right there. No, it was going to return that one right there. It's going to say false. See? And then if you were to change this one to true, you could see that's fetching that one because, yeah. Simple tutorial. See you next time.